Hi, it's summer and this is my January and February wrap up. I've read 21 books so far this year, so there's a lot of books that I have to talk about, so I'm going to try to go through them as quickly as possible. My first book of 2024 was The Moth Keepers by Kay O'Neill. This is a graphic novel. I gave it four and a half stars. I really, really liked it. It's kind of a cozy fantasy graphic novel, and the group of people that we're following, they do everything at nighttime, like nighttime is their daytime, and a big part of their culture are these moths, and there's one person in their group and in their city that has the job of being the caretaker of these moths and in this book we follow the new moth keeper. For this one I said I loved this, such a unique concept and beautiful cozy illustrations. I think at times it was trying to do too many things but that's my only complaint. I feel like with graphic novels you have to keep the plot and stuff pretty simple and not have too many things going on and also in graphic novels there's not always like conversations and stuff happening. Sometimes it's just images. So if you have too many things going on that aren't being like fully explained and they're just kind of being left up to like someone interpreting the picture in the right way, it can get a little bit confusing sometimes. I really only found that happening a few times in this book and so that's the only reason it didn't get a full five. Next, I read The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. I gave this one three stars, <laughs> which I know is a very controversial opinion. I almost could even bump it down to like two and a half, maybe two stars. This book did have redeeming qualities, but most of it just made me either annoyed or angry. <laughs> this one is about Linus Barker, who is a by-the-book caseworker in the department in charge of magical youth. So this is a contemporary setting, but in this world there's magic. And rather than treating people with magic as like normal citizens, they just kind of like send magical kids to these care homes. So Linus is tasked to go to this magical home for children and just check in on them, make sure everything is going okay, and also he's checking in on the Antichrist that apparently is living in this house. For this one, I said I feel pretty in the middle with this one. I was so excited to read this because of the cozy found family vibes, which it did have and I did like those parts. But the amount of fat phobia and never-ending body negativity slash diet culture talk made this almost unbearable to read for me. I also hated the audiobook narrator. I did love the character development though and the ending definitely made me tear up a little bit. I know that people's kind of main argument with this one and like the amount of fat phobia and stuff that's in it is that it's to show like character development. Linus would be considered plus size and it's constantly like what's on his mind and people are like saying stuff to his face about it. Like just really disgusting stuff. And through his experience at this home, he kind of, I guess, learns to like love himself a little bit more. And so you're supposed to see that change in him from being worried about his weight to not really caring about it. But I feel like there are ways to do that in a book, like to show that kind of character development and not use such terrible language. Like it was almost kind of like triggering to me a little bit. I just really didn't feel like it was necessary. It was just a really weird choice in my opinion. And it definitely got in the way of me fully enjoying this book. Also the narrator did like the worst voices for some of the kids. The voices were so annoying and it really took me out of the story. So if you're going to read this one, I would definitely suggest reading it physically. I actually just changed my rating on Goodreads to two stars because after talking about it, I feel like that is really how I feel. <laughs> like it's a two star book for me. After that, I read And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. I read this for Gwen's Patreon. I'll link it in the description. We did kind of like a read along and then we watched a movie adaptation together. So it was really fun. I loved the experience around this book and reading it, but I didn't really enjoy the book itself. I also gave this one two stars. This one is about a group of people that get invited to this secluded house by a mysterious person. And when they get there, they are being picked off one by one. For this one, I said it was really cool to read the book that so many mysteries are based off of, but that was one of the only things that I liked about it. I didn't care about any of the characters and there were too many to keep track of. The writing style was also very repetitive and got kind of annoying. The only other thing that I liked about it was the setting on a remote island. I think that I would enjoy a movie adaptation of this a lot better than the book. And I did. <laughs> There's an adaptation of it on YouTube that you can watch. It's like a three part series or something. It was really well done and I really enjoyed that. It was a lot easier to keep track of all the characters because you could physically see all of them. In the book, it was just like too much, like so many characters. And then with the writing style, she would use the same words over and over again, specifically the word queer. And that's not even the way she was using the word queer. Like I know that it was a different time and stuff and that word was used differently. I was just like, girl, you're supposed to be this like iconic writer. You can't think of another word to use. I feel like she could have gotten creative and like 
came up with more than just like one word to describe everything. Next, I have a five star book. Thank God, because I was feeling so negative <laughs> up until this point. This one is Emily Wilde's Map of the Otherlands by Heather Fawcett. I love this book so much. I also have the UK and the US edition of this book because I just like had to get it, but I wanted to show off this cover because it's so pretty. This one is the sequel to Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, which was my favorite book of last year. I got approved for an ARC for this book and I was so excited about it. So I actually got to read this one a little bit before it came out. This one is just following Emily and Wendell on another fairy adventure. For this one, I said, OMG, this was just as good, if not better than the first one. I'm so in love with this world and the characters. Emily and Wendell have the best banter and I love that they are polar opposites, but still perfect for each other. The setting of this book was so cool with so many different doors and fairies. This was cozy, but also had me on the edge of my seat at times. And I loved the plot slash adventure in this one. Definitely a new all time favorite book. It was a perfect book in my opinion. This one has the exact same vibes and pacing as the first book. And it was just exactly what I wanted. Next, I read The Off Limits Rule by Sarah Adams. I actually read this book because of a video that I did reading my book besties favorite books of 2023. So this was Keisha's favorite book. So if you want any more like in-depth thoughts and stuff, or if you wanna go watch that video, I will put it in the description and in the cards. This one is about a single mom who is moving back to her hometown. She wants to be close to family again. She's a hairdresser and I've been a hairdresser for almost 10 years. So it was kind of fun to like read that in a book. She ends up kind of getting involved with one of her brother's best friends. I gave this one three stars and I said, Sarah Adams is the queen of quick, cute, cheesy romance. I loved the brother's best friend trope and that Lucy was a hairdresser. This book was everything that I wished Confessed by Colleen Hoover was. One of the things that I really hated in this one though was how much miscommunication there was. Almost all of the problems could have been fixed if people just spoke their mind. Lucy was also a little too over the top for me and gave me a lot of secondhand embarrassment. <laughs> Overall, this was a really cute romance, just not a new all time favorite. After that, I read another graphic novel from Kay O'Neill. This one is The Tea Dragon Festival. This is the sequel to The Tea Dragon Society and it's just another cute tea dragon adventure. <laughs> I gave it four stars. It was really cute and I really liked the illustrations in it. Next, I read The Soulmate by Sally Hepworth. This was also for my book bestie video and this was Zoe's pick. This is set in Australia and it's following this family that lives in this house kind of like on a cliff. And they didn't know this before buying the house, but a lot of people go there to commit suicide by jumping off the cliff. So the husband has gone out and talked a lot of people off of the ledge, but this one night he goes out to talk to someone and the wife is watching from the window and she looks away for a second. And when she looks back up, the person he went out to talk to is no longer there. And his arms are kind of extended out in front of him, almost like he pushed her. So she doesn't really know what happened. And she also kind of feels like what he tells to the police isn't exactly what she thinks she saw. So like, is he lying about something? I love this one. I gave it four and a half stars. I said this was so crazy and layered. I loved that the book started out with the action instead of there being a ton of buildup before things started to happen. It was very twisty, full of drama, and I liked the multiple points of view and different timelines. I was hooked and I read this in a day. Next, for that same video, I read Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. This was Lena's pick. This one is the sequel to Part of Your World. It's about these two doctors that kind of get off on the wrong foot, but they start writing letters to each other. They each have a lot going on in their own lives. So this book is a little bit heavy because of those things, but it's also just like a really cute romance. I gave this one four stars. For this one, I said, this was such a heartwarming romance with characters that felt real. I related so much to Jacob because of his social anxiety and I loved how Brie was so good for him. I didn't love some of the conflict that happened towards the end, but overall, I really liked this one. How Jacob kind of like dealt with his social anxiety is really similar to how I deal with mine. And so it was really cool to kind of like feel seen that way in a book. And I just loved how patient Brie was with him. It was really good. And I'm looking forward to reading more from Abby Jimenez in the future. After that, I read Mislaid in Parts Half Known by Sean and McGuire. This is the ninth book in the Wayward Children series. I think the pattern with this series is that there is one book that follows like a main cast of characters and then the next book will just be kind of like focusing on one character and their backstory and then we go back to the full cast then a new character and just their story. This book is one of the books that just follows kind of like the main group of kids and I'm finding that those aren't my favorite out of the series. I ended up giving this one three and a half stars and I didn't write a review for myself to remind me like what I really felt about this book or what happened in it. Cause honestly, I don't really remember a whole lot of what happened. I think that it does kind of like directly follow the events of the last book 
and it also has a lot of things from that book that kind of like tied over into this one and i kind of wish that it would have just kind of like left those things in the last book i know that that's so cryptic but like i just don't want to spoil anything since it's like so far into the series honestly though i feel like my main complaint is that this cover is so cool and it has dinosaurs on it and we barely even see dinosaurs in the book. It's <laughs> so, like, it was fine, but it's definitely not my favorite book in the series. After that, I read Hail Mary by Candy Steiner. I read this for the book bestie video, and this was my cousin Allie's pick. This one is an enemies to lovers second chance romance. It's also a sports romance, which I don't usually like sports romances, but this one really worked for me. It's also forced proximity, and it's set during, like, college. The main character is Mary, and she was an outcast growing up and she loved playing video games and she ended up becoming really close friends with this guy named Leo at her school through playing video games and he didn't know who she was but she knew who he was. They had a falling out in high school and then current day she's desperate for a new living situation so she ends up moving in with him and a few of his teammates in their house. She's kind of had a glow up and current day she's like super cool and she's a tattoo artist and I loved that aspect of this book. I gave this one five stars. This is a really great example of like it wasn't a perfect book, but the vibes were totally there and I had a great time reading it, so it's five stars. I said I loved Mary's character, she was so cool, and I loved the setup for the book. The setup for this book, like, I was immediately hooked. Like, I was very invested to see, like, what was going to happen with their story. I loved the chemistry between her and Leo. I loved all of their roommates. I loved hearing about all of the tattoo artist stuff and the spice level. <laughs> it was very spicy and a very fun time. The sex scenes definitely were not realistic, though. They were still fun to read but I was kind of like rolling my eyes a little bit. I also kind of thought that Mary was being a little bit dumb and dramatic at one point in the book, but even with all of those things, I had such a good time and the vibes were everything that I wanted, so I didn't really care and it's still five stars for me. Another book bestie book is Happiness Falls by Angie Kim. This was Jordan's pick. This one is set during the COVID pandemic and it's following a Korean American family. We're hearing the story through the sister in this family named Mia. One day they realize that the dad is missing and their younger brother is the only one that was with him and could tell them what happened to the dad. But the youngest brother is autistic and he also has Angelman syndrome, which means he's nonverbal. And so the only person in their family that can tell them what happened to the dad like really can't tell them what happened. So it's kind of this mystery of them trying to figure out where their dad is. I gave this one three and a half stars. For this one I said, this was such an interesting book with a very unique mystery. I was definitely invested in the family and wanted the best for them. I didn't love how the story was told with Mia recounting the events to us from the future. And I also got annoyed with how juvenile she was. This felt like a four star up until towards the end because I didn't really like how the mystery was wrapped up. I just needed like a little bit more. The writing was really well done though, and you could tell that a lot of research went into this book. After that, I read Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. I gave this one three stars, but honestly, I could almost be tempted to give it a two and a half, which I know is a very unpopular opinion. This one is fantasy historical fiction. It's about these two characters that are rivals at a like journalism company. I think they write for a newspaper. There's a war between gods that's happening right now, and so the heroine of the story, Iris, decides that she wants to go out to the war front and write about the war from there. So that's kind of like the main plot of the story. But there's also like a really cool magical element between these typewriters that her and the main guy, Roman, they each have one. The typewriters are kind of like tied to each other and whatever you type on the typewriter, you can send it to the person with the other typewriter, no matter where they are in the world. So they kind of like have a correspondence with each other. He knows who she is, but she doesn't know who he is or who she's writing to. For this one, I said this was pretty good, just not as good as I thought it would be since it had so much hype around it. I didn't really understand why there was a war slash how it started, and I didn't really like how insta-lovey it was. I really liked the typewriters and how they worked though. Like I said, this definitely felt super insta-lovey, which is just like not my favorite. I also now have a better understanding of like why the war is happening and why people are participating in it. But even though I understand it now, like I still am just kind of like... Like, I don't know, it's just like not enough for me. And I just kind of like didn't really care about the war. And I know that the second book goes more into that kind of stuff, but honestly, I'm just not gonna read the second book. <laughs> I feel like if you're newer to the fantasy genre, you might enjoy this one a little bit more. But as a fantasy girly, I just like needed a little bit more from it. I liked it, but it's just not a new all time favorite. This one is another book bestie book. And it's Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. I read this one because of Gwen and I gave this book five stars. I love it so much. It's honestly, I think, like in my top three favorite books of all time. I'm obsessed with it. It was so good. 
childhood it wrecked me this is about two childhood best friends that kind of have a falling out and then they reconnect again in college and they start making video games together this one is set in the 90s so it's a really fun time in history to be following and i just loved all of the characters they felt so real to me. Like the entire time that I was reading this book, I wanted to Google these people and the games that they had worked on. I wish so badly that the games that were talked about and created in this book were real so that I could play them. For this one, I said, I don't even know where to start. This was just a perfect book. It absolutely wrecked me. I felt for these characters so deeply and I felt like they were real people. You just get to know them so well throughout the book. The writing was also really good and I just don't think I will ever stop thinking about this book. <laughs> I feel like I can't even fully express like how much I loved this. Like you just need to go read it. And this book for me, I had originally kind of wanted to pick it up because I liked the cover. And then after hearing kind of more about like what it was about, I was like, you know, I don't really want to read it. And then when I decided to read people's favorite books of 2023, I knew that I was gonna have to read this because it was Gwen's favorite and she had kind of made me want to like pick it up again. So I'm so glad that I gave this book a shot, even though I originally kind of wasn't going to. Even if you don't like historical fiction, I think you should still pick it up because I'm not the biggest fan of historical fiction and this still was just like so good. This also I think would be considered like kind of literary, but I think even if you're not a fan of literary, you would probably still like it. So if you don't mind a kind of slower paced, more like character driven book, I really think that you need to pick this up. It was so so good like i kind of think this is going to be my favorite book of 2024 i kind of can't see myself loving something more than i loved this book <laughs> after that i read snapdragon by kat lee this is a magical middle grade graphic novel it's about this main character snap who befriends the town witch it was really sweet i loved the plot i felt like it was a very like well thought out and executed graphic novel like the vibes were there but like the entire story arc was also there i loved that it was magical i loved the illustrations i didn't really know what to think going into this book but it went in a direction that i didn't really see coming and i really liked that i would say like a light trigger warning for like animal death like a little bit it's like in a respectful way technically but i'm sensitive to that so i just wanted to put that out there just in case anyone else might have a hard time with that after that, I read a poetry collection. It's Violet Bent Backwards Over the Grass by Lana Del Rey. I normally don't like to rate poetry at all unless it's gonna be five stars, but I feel like since it's Lana, I can kind of like give a more truthful rating. <laughs> I gave this one two and a half stars. I didn't really like it that much, mostly just because I didn't understand it. And that might be because like, I don't really know a lot about lana and like her personal life and stuff like i like her music but i don't really know a lot about her that maybe would have helped me kind of like decipher some of the poetry overall it was just okay my favorite poems were quiet waiter blue forever my bedroom is a sacred place now happy and sugarfish after that i read the nanny by lana ferguson i gave this one three stars it's about this woman who has an only fans account or she had one in the past and she really needs work, so she ends up becoming a nanny for this single dad. And it turns out that he was a subscriber to her OnlyFans, but he doesn't know that she is who she is. I liked this one, it was just okay. I gave it three stars. I said this definitely wasn't the most original thing I've ever read, and I think that it could have been shortened quite a bit, but it was cute and steamy and exactly what I was in the mood for at the time. And that's really all I have to say about it. <laughs> After that, I read another poetry collection. I got an ARC for this one. The collection comes out on April 2nd of this year. For this one, I said this was a really sad, raw, and powerful book about chronic pain, childhood trauma, motherhood, and racism, along with many other important topics. There were several poems from this collection that I was drawn to, such as Blue Magic, Dear Everyone Who Ain't a Black Woman, and Just When I Thought I Was Grown, I Grew. I was only able to understand about 50% of the poems in this collection, but I still really enjoyed hearing from an experience unlike my own, and I liked the prose and rhythm. I also really liked the cover. I do think that it was a little bit on the longer side and could have been edited down, but that's kind of just like a personal preference, and that's really my only critique for it. Next is my last book bestie book. This is The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston, and I read this because of Jesse. This one is a magical realism romance about an apartment that can travel seven years in the past. The main female character is in the publishing industry and she has recently inherited her late aunt's apartment. And the main male character is a chef and he was staying in the apartment seven years in the past. So when Clementine moves in and the apartment sends her back in the past seven years, she meets Ewan. And back then he was just an aspiring chef, just getting started in the industry and he had just moved to New York. I loved the setting of this book set in New York. I gave this one five stars. I am obsessed with it. I love it. 
this is the only other book that I could see even coming close to like beating Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow because I loved it that much. But I still think that Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow will be my favorite book of this year. Anyway though, for this one, I said I absolutely loved this book. Clementine and Ewan were such a fun couple to follow. I loved them together. I just felt like they had really great chemistry and banter and I just really loved seeing them interact with each other and get to know each other. I also really loved the friendships in this book as well as Clementine's relationship with her aunt. The grief was palpable and I felt like I was going through everything right alongside her. The apartment itself was a character all on its own and I want to spend a weekend there painting in the bathtub and eating fettuccine. This was full of magic, good food, and deep conversation. I loved every second. I also really recommend sticking around for the author's note. The end of this book just like had me sobbing and then the author's note had me sobbing again. Such a good book. I loved how cozy the apartment felt. I loved all of the cooking and all of the food that was mentioned. I really like books that have like a food element to them. It was also really cool kind of like seeing the publishing industry a little bit as well. I just loved this. It was an easy five stars. After that, I read House of Flame and Shadow by Sarah J Maas. This is the third and I'm pretty sure final book in the Crescent City series. I'm pretty sure everyone knows what this one is about by now, so I won't give like a synopsis, but I gave this four stars. I could maybe bump it down to a three. I don't really know for sure what my final rating is, but for this one, I said I was so nervous about how this one would go, but I really, really liked it. I do think that it could have been shortened and the constant perspective changes gave me whiplash, but overall I still really enjoyed the characters and what happened in this book. Yeah, my main complaint were those perspective changes. You'd read like one paragraph and then go down to the next one and it would have abruptly switched to a different person, like with no warning, with no like break or anything. So I'd think that I was still reading from like one person's perspective and then be like, oh, like we're in a completely different place now. It was really annoying. <laughs> Next, I read another arc. This one is The Woods All Black by Lee Mandelow. This one comes out on March 19th. This one is historical fiction set in 1920s Appalachia. It follows a trans man named Leslie who used to be a war nurse and they're being sent out to this really small community in Appalachia to be a nurse there. The people in this community are very, very religious, so they don't really like Leslie because of their identity. This book made me like so angry for Leslie. It was really hard to read at times because of all of the like transphobia and stuff that was happening. I gave this one four stars though. For this one, I said this was so weird and unhinged, but I really liked it. I liked the queer representation. The setting was very atmospheric and I loved the writing style. I felt so angry for these characters. So I loved that this was a revenge story. Very satisfying. This book was definitely more social horror than paranormal horror. And I was kind of hoping for more of the latter. So that's why it's closer to a four star for me. I'm really glad I read it and I can't wait to read more from this author. Definitely look into trigger warnings before going into this one though. For this one, like emphasis on weird horror. <laughs> I would really only recommend this one if you like that subgenre of horror and if you've read like a good amount of it. <laughs> I'm really interested to see more people pick this one up when it gets published and to hear people's thoughts on it. And then my last book on this list is Bride by Allie Hazelwood. This one is a paranormal romance between vampires and werewolves. It also has a marriage of convenience, which is a trope that I really like. I gave this one three and a half out of five stars. I said I had a lot of fun with this one. I was just along for the ride and I enjoyed the romance and plot. It's not the most original story and I found it to be pretty predictable and one of the sex scenes really gave me the ick, the dirty talk specifically, but even with those things I still really enjoyed it. Those are all the books that I've read in the past couple of months. I've read some not great ones and I've also read like some new all-time favorites so I feel like it's been a really good couple months of reading. This year I'm trying to be a little bit better about not rating books so highly. I feel like I tend to rate things on the higher side and I want my book ratings to kind of like be a true reflection of what I really thought of them. So I feel like I had more like two star books than usual, but it's because I'm kind of like working on like my rating system and stuff. Let me know in the comments if we have any favorites in common. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Sunrise